let's get right to work because I am a big, big fan of big, big football games, as you know, on this show. And I do not think that there is a bigger game this weekend uh, than the Utes and the uh, Oki Light Cowboys. The Utah Utes at Oklahoma State this weekend. It's everything that you want in the Big 12. It's why this conference it, it added, expanded. Uh, you have got more big games, and certainly this qualifies because it should, and I say should, be one of the best games of the season. If Cam Rising is what we think he is, and again, I understand we've all got our tinfoil hats on and conspiracy theories. I totally understand it. There's no reason to believe Utah quarterback Cam Rising will not play in this game. There's every reason to believe he's good to go. It is what Kyle Whittingham does, which is he does not talk about injuries, and he has not. He said he's good. Uh, Money Parks said he's good. There's no reason to question it. So let's go into this game believing that Cam Rising's good to go. And if Cam Rising's good to go, I think you have to favor the Utah Utes here. There are so many questions about that Oak State defense, and I think that's where this matchup will be won. Uh, I think it's this Utah offense, Makai Bernard in the backfield. Um, I think Deshaun Stanley becomes a very important player for Utah this weekend. I think it is getting Brant Keithy the football in space. Uh, you have two big linebackers out for Oak State. Jake, there's every reason to believe that this is a win for Utah. Absolutely. And, and I think, you know, uh, if you, you know, we're obviously going to get deep into the X's and O's and talk about this game. And I think that, you know, the the big thing from a Big 12 point of view is that the Big 12 conference can't afford to have Utah lose this game. Utah needs to win this game uh, and they need to go on to win the conference in order for the Big 12 to, to you know, have a shot at getting into the college football playoff because I don't believe Oklahoma State is that guy this year. I don't believe that they're good enough to, to get in even in the expanded format. So when I look at this game, you know, if you're Mike Gundy, you know, your biggest priorities on defense are, are figuring out how to contain um, you know, how to contain Money Parks and Brant Keithy running through your secondary. And and I think that that's a very difficult thing to do, not just for Oklahoma State, but for anybody playing Utah. And, and it's so difficult to stop those two because Utah is good at running the football. So if, uh, again, as I've said all week long, you know, I think the dynamic that's going to play out for Utah here is you're going to start early in this game by running the football. You're going to prove a point. You're going to get physical. Uh, and you are going to try to establish the run Number one, that would be the first objective if I'm Utah. The second objective would be, um, you know, getting a completion or two to Money Parks down the field of at least 20 yards. Uh, it doesn't have to be a 50 yard, you know, bomb for a touchdown. But I think what you need to do is you need to gain the respect of those safeties uh, with some good completions down the field. And if that happens, then I think you're going to see Brent Keithy have a big day uh, pretty much from the start. Now, in a perfect world for Oklahoma State, what do you need to do? You need to stop the run early in this game. You need to get Utah's offense off the field quickly in that first possession. Uh, and you need to take the lead in 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 control this game. And, and that's where I think Oklahoma State's going to have some problems. I don't trust your defense. I, I, I didn't love what I saw against Arkansas. And Oklahoma State fan is going to say that, you know, that, you know, that, that Gundy and company held things back. And, you know, that wasn't a true, you know, indication of what this team is about. And, and I'm saying what truer indication do we need than you needing overtime to beat Arkansas and largely needing th that the, the necessity for overtime was created by your defense getting beat repeatedly in the secondary. So I just don't believe that you're going to slow down this Utah offense, even if Cam Rising is 70%. Let's say his hand is sore, but he can throw the football and has to play through that. I still think you're going to have trouble slowing down that offense. I think that Oklahoma State and their th this 3-3-5 three, three, defense, so they like to play that that 5-DB shell, three defensive linemen, three linebackers, that's not the best matchup for this Utah offense. But here's the thing. Again, I point to the I point to the guys that are not going to play in this game for Oak State, and I think it's significant. Um, I think you look at Colin Oliver and Justin Wright both being out. Uh, those are big losses. And I think that when you look at Cam Rising, uh, I think you've got to find a way to get Brant Keithy involved in this game early. 
I think you've got to take a shot down the field uh, to really test the metal of that Oak State secondary. They've given up big plays. There, there's no question about that, that this Oak State defense is, is susceptible to that big play. And I think it's because they haven't gotten um, as much pressure as you would hope up front. Um, and I don't think that changes. I, as mediocre as this Utah offensive line has been this year, a 3-3-5 plays into their strengths. Because Oak State, the other thing they don't like doing on defense is blitzing a lot. And if you're not going to blitz in a 3-3-5 against this uh, schematic for Utah, I think you're going to have a tough time getting home. And if you allow Cam Rising to sit back there and pick apart your defense, Makai Bernard and Dijon Stanley are going to have big games. And then you have nowhere to go. And you're going to wind up in the exact same spot that you were in against Arkansas. But this Utah team can finish because Lander Barton, the linebacker for the Utes, is a stud. He is a guy that is great against the run. And I also am curious, is this the week that Ollie Gordon gets healthy? Is this the week that he starts eating high on the hog? Because he's faced seven, eight, nine guys in the box week in and week out. And this Oak State team has struggled to deal with that. And I, I throw the Tulsa game out. As much as everybody wants to throw out Southern Utah University for the Utes, I throw the Tulsa game out because they're garbo when it comes sure. to being compared to a, a club like Oak State. I look at the first two games, South Dakota State, um, specifically that Arkansas game, that Arkansas offense is not much different when it comes to style than this Utah offense is going to be against Oak State. Because I think you're going to see, now you don't have Jaquindon Jackson in the backfield like you once did at Utah, who is at now Arkansas. But you have a guy like Makai Bernard, and you have a guy in Dijon Stanley, and you have a guy in Cam Rising who I think a lot of people forget is a very mobile quarterback by design. He does not run out of out of, of panic. He is a guy that is calculated in the way that he runs. He moves a lot of times to throw the football. And if you turn your back to him, he will pick up 12, 15, 17 yards at a time on you. So I, I don't love this matchup for this Oak State defense the way they are currently constituted. And I would completely agree. A 3-3-5 three, three, is not the most ideal way to stop the run. And, it, and I think that, you know, when, when you look at Utah, like let's talk about the Baylor game a little bit. Like I think Baylor was very physical against Utah and, and as they should have been. I mean, I completely agreed with the strategy Baylor rolled out. As much as I thought that was a dirty-ass hit on Cam Rising that led to the the hand injury, I I, I think that that, that – that style of play when you're playing Utah on defense is, is what you need to employ to get to this team. Yeah. Because I, and, and I do think you'll see shades of it. I do think there will be moments in this game where like, if you're cam rising, you talk about him running strategically, if you will running only when he needs to per se, like if you're cam rising, you need to be very cognizant of getting out of bounds, get down early. You cannot afford to to make mistakes in this game whether it be you know you you getting taken out of the game due to injury after you took a big hit or you allowed the defense to get a look at you uh turning the football over can't happen in this game because as much as I would agree with you the 335 leaves Oklahoma State a little bit vulnerable against the run um if you turn the football over and you give Oklahoma State you know let's call it two extra possessions that maybe they shouldn't have had because you made a mistake that could be the difference in this game because I don't think Utah's winning this game by, you know, 14 points. That's not the kind of game we're looking Their at here. linebacking core is going – it, it, it's probably linebacker core versus linebacker core. I believe – and obviously I, I may have a little bias in this belief because I have seen so much of Lander Barton. And I, I, I don't see that – you're going to be able to scheme Lander Barton out of the run game here. And if, if we know anything about Utah, they're going to force your 37-year-old quarterback to, to, beat, to beat you. Oak State's going to have to throw the ball to beat you. Utah, in favor of Oak, Oak State here, Utah has not covered well this year. Mm -hmm. In the games that we have seen, and again, I... I do believe that there is far more depth in the defensive playbook than we have seen from Utah because, frankly, they just haven't needed it. They haven't had to get exotic in any situation this season so far. These three games, 
I mean, the Baylor game, was it somewhat of a test? Not really. Not really. Uh, was the Utah State game a test? Not really. Yeah, I mean, I, I think people were like, hey, like, what's going on here? Utah's coming out way slow against Utah State, and then they took control. And and I think that's the hard part, is that there's a lot of unknown for both of these teams uh, when it comes to the playbook. I would tend to, just looking at this logically, I would tend to say that we've seen more of Oklahoma State's playbook than we've seen of Utah's playbook because of the way the Arkansas situation went down. I personally believe, and maybe I'm wrong, I'm open to that, but I personally believe you employed everything that you had to win that game. Like, I think that Oklahoma State was like, hey, we got to have this game, and we're going to do everything we can do to win this game late. So I think you saw a lot of stuff out of that playbook. But, you know, I I, I think defensively for Utah, you there's a lot of disguise and a lot of trickery that's going to go down in this game pre-snap, and I think that's that's what I think potentially could lead to an Allen Bowman interception. How much or how often or how willing is Mike Gundy to allow his offense to to play in the spread, to throw the ball all over the place? Because I, I have a hard time believing that Ollie Gordon runs for 75 yards in this game. I have a hard time believing that. And I think you're, you're, if that's who you are, I, am I, am I making too much out of Ollie Gordon's struggles? I don't think we're making too much out of it. I, I think it's a huge question in this game. I mean, obviously if you're an Oklahoma state fan, you're feeling much better about this game. If Ollie Gordon had, you know, let's say 300 yards on the ground already, you know, if he had, you know, big numbers on the ground in these first couple of Warm up games, if you will, before conference play starts. Like I, I, I think you'd be feeling better. But uh, so no, I don't think you're making too big a deal of, out of it at all. I mean, I, I think Ali Gordon was one of your your biggest sources of offense last year, and he just hasn't been here for it. And and I don't know, honestly, I don't know if it's an injury they're not talking about, or yeah. if it's if if it's that you know the whole the off season stuff that he, that he went through uh, by his own doing, obviously. But all the offseason nonsense that he went through, if that like changed him somehow, like I don't know where this dude went, but he was he was the best running back in the Big 12 uh, last year, and now he's nowhere to be found. And you haven't really faced a potent defense. And I just uh, there's something wrong. There's something wrong. I, I'm I'm not buying it. I don't care uh, uh, how how. Many guys are in the box. Ollie Gordon's too talented to be. Is I believe he's two point six yards a carry in his last two games. Well, and again, how even if even if there are you know eight nine guys in the box, you know you should on some level be able to run outside and leverage his athletic ability. I mean, this I is, would think so. This is not a guy who who is like some some bull that likes to just beat you with strength. I mean, he has strength. He can run over a guy, certainly. But his 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 the best part about his game is his athletic ability and his ability to either outrun you or his ability to make you miss. And I think that Ollie Gordon, you know, for whatever reason, just hasn't had the start to the season that he wanted to. But I also think we need to be saying that, you know, by any competitor's standard here, you, you're showing up for this game. This is you are, you, you know, if, if you're Oklahoma state with all due respect, this is your game of the year right here. This is your super bowl. And I think that, that for Utah, it's an interesting situation because I don't think this is their game of the year. I just think they know they have to go out and get this one, uh, mainly because they've played in so many big games. And so I think the, the, the word like pressure or expectations here is an interesting one when you think about like where Oklahoma State at is, is is at in their season versus where Utah is at in their season and how we've gotten to this point because like you were saying the Utah State game was kind of a crazy game early on right I mean you yeah had the Isaac Wilson situation they get behind in the game yeah then the defense makes some plays you know that big hit over the middle like then and then that game kind of turns. So, like I was saying yesterday, I Utah can't afford to get off to a slow start in this game like they did against Utah State. And I know every Utah fan is like, well, you know, that's not a fair comparison. It was Isaac Wilson. What I'm here to tell you is it is a fair comparison because Isaac Wilson wasn't the reason on his own you got off to a slow start. He had nothing to do with you getting beat over the top in the secondary. He had nothing to do with any of that. 
and that can't happen in this game. I'm really interested, and I can't find it. I meant to look before the show, but I forgot. I, I don't know if Karene Reed for Utah is going to play. He missed the Utah State game, uh, the fine linebacker for the Utes, who, I mean, shocked the world when he came back this year, I think, most of us. But I think he's another key contributor to watch. Um, and I just don't know if he's going to play. And I, frankly, I haven't seen an update on it. Um, and I think it is a, uh, I think that is a huge, huge deal. Uh, but I, I you know, let, I mean, let's, let's get to picking it. Um, I'm, I'm leaning towards Oak state here. Uh, I think you have to lean Oak state in this game. Um, and I think that it, it, there is, it's tough to go to boom pickings and win. I, I think that's that overwhelmingly that that's where I'm at. And I we haven't seen Cam Rising play a full game in over two years. I think it dates back to the conference championship game two years ago. That was his last full game. We haven't seen him play a full game. And I I think there are more questions about the health. Um, and if Karene Reed is out, which I'm guessing he is because we didn't get an update saying he's not. If Karene Reed does not play in this game, I that he is such a stud yeah. that he's so. But and and I love Lander and I love that defensive front. I actually think the 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 front's held up very well here. I think this is going to be a high thirties game because I think it's going to be a shootout. I'm not confident the Utes can cover, but I'm not. I know for a fact Oak State can't cover, and I think that that this is going to be. To what you said earlier, if, if Alan Bowman throws an interception, the Utes will win. Mm -hmm. I think that if I am picking this game, I think it's 38 34. 38. I think Oak State, if Oak State surpasses 30 points, they're going to win the game. I think they will. I think it's 38 34, 38 37. Okay. Yeah, I guess uh, I have a very different view of this game. I think that Alan Bowman is going to make mistakes in this game, uh, and I and I don't even think it's going to be that his play is awful because I think he'll be really solid. I I just give the Ute defense a lot of credit for what they're able to do, and they're so specific matchup to matchup yeah. that I think you never know what you're going to get per like scheme wise out of them. You never know. They are, are always showing you something new that you haven't seen. So for me, the way I think this game is going to go is like I said, I think, you know, whoever scores first, uh, that's going to be a huge part of this game. If Oklahoma state's playing from in front, obviously they're, they're going to have a better chance. But what I think is going to happen is I think Utah is going to play this game from in front. I think that Utah will, uh, will be leading at the half by three points. I think they will get a turnover in the second half that will change the momentum of the game. And I think they ultimately win this game probably 35, 28. And I think they, mm. Oak, I don't think Oak state crosses 30 points in this game. And I think it's largely due to two things. I That's... think Utah is going to run effectively. And I think they are, there's going to be a turnover by Alan Bowman in this game. And it's going to cost you points. I think I can see it. I'll be honest with you. I, I, I spent a lot of time last night trying to find trying to find different angles on this game. I mean, doing some projections with everybody being healthy on Utah's offense. And if Cam Rising plays and that finger's not an issue, I could see Utah scoring 40 points in this game. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not even being sensational. But I think his health, and and not just not just heading into the game, I, I think his, avail his ability to play the whole game is a big narrative, a big thing to pay attention to. Like, I wasn't kidding when I said, like, if I'm Oklahoma State, I'm watching that Baylor tape, and I'm saying, hey, when Cam Rising leaks out, if we have that opportunity, we don't want to take a penalty, but if we have the opportunity, gotta put a hat on him. we got to hit him. Yeah. We have to. Yeah, I I, I at one point had this 41-28 Utah, mm -hmm. and then I just start, I, 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 I start going into this thing where can Utah cover? That's my 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 biggest question. In the secondary, you mean? Yes. Yeah. Because the one thing that I believe, and I think if it's not in your DNA, you should go to your doctor. <laughs> Kyle Whittingham and this, this incarnation of, of Utah under Kyle Whittingham always gets to the quarterback. Always. And you look at Logan Fano, and you probably don't even know his name. 
Logan Fano is a stud. As long as his ACLs are intact and he has had multiple ACL injuries. When Logan Fano plays, he plays at a high level and he gets after the quarterback. Alan Bowman's not hard to find. And Logan Fano, Van Fillinger, you look at this defense. They have done a really, O'Toole, they've done a really good job getting after the quarterback so far. It's called Sack Lake City for a reason. I can see this being, I can see this being a, a really, this could be one of the best football games of the year. Yeah. I'm not even exaggerating. I, I'm 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 confident in 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 my pick. I feel very mm-hmm. confident that this Utah defense will generate a turnover and they will be able to run the football against Oklahoma State's defense. And if you do those two things yeah. and cam rising, because if you're running the football, the problem is if Utah's running the football, they're gonna eat clock. We've seen them do this like in the Baylor game again. And I know it was garbage time. I know everyone says, Oh, it was garbage yeah. time, end of the game. Dude, they ran the ball against the ones on Baylor to end that game for five straight minutes. And I I, like, that's a big deal. My only concern, my only concern here is, is Cam Rising's health because I, I, and I would love to get your thoughts in the comment section. These two teams, if everybody's a hundred percent and healthy and ready to play, they're almost dead even. But Utah's got a far better defense. They're more talented. Uh, They are, they are better up front. Their linebackers are better. Uh, I think schematically, uh, Morgan Scally and, and Kyle Whittingham are, are two of the best defensive minds in all of college football. Who who has a better offense right now? This Oak State Oak State team or last year's USC team? Who's got a better offense? Okay, well, last year's USC team. Who's the more mobile quarterback? That's tough. Caleb Williams is was the is was the more mobile quarterback, and they got to him repeatedly. So I'm just telling you, like I, I'm not a Utah fan. But Oklahoma State fan is going to find out in this game. And I understand it's in Stillwater, tough place to play. Okay, tough environment. That should all be fine and dandy but for you. It's Utah. interesting you bring that up, though. And I don't mean to cut you off. The, the, I've watched a lot of Oklahoma State offense tape. A lot of it. I like what Alan Bowman's doing. But the talent that he has faced defensively has been so bad. Uh, and I, I, I know I've picked this for Oklahoma State to win, and I'm I'm vacillating back and forth. I totally get it, but the volume of of plays where Stribling is just running free is shocking. It, the the idea that they've got two really good wide receivers, and Alan Bowman is a guy. If his if his receiver is open, he's going to put it on him. I don't think you're going to have that luxury against a that this is. Do you guys understand that Utah's defense is the best defense they've seen in two years, and I'm including Texas. This is the best defense that this group at Oklahoma State will have faced. And Alan Bowman, I don't think, and I think Oklahoma State fan does not respect the Utah defense. Yeah. Just simply does not respect them. And I think on the flip side of that, I think Alan Bowman has played better than we give him credit for. But here's where the rubber meets the road. Offensively, you're not creative at Oak State. You are in too many situations against Arkansas. You were so conservative. And because guys were getting home, and again, I think Alan Bowman does a good job of getting rid of the football, but because guys were getting home, he was making terrible decisions. What's going to happen when you have Utah's ends and they're doing those twists because Utah has, we have not seen, we have not seen disguise and having watched most of Utah's, every single one of Utah's snaps now, we have not seen almost any disguise in the Utah defense. You guys understand that? Yeah, that's what I'm worried about for Oak State's offense. Utah has not put disguise on tape this season. And, and you can go back and look at it. They have, all you have seen from Utah's defense is, show me, show me eight guys, drop out, rush three. Show me eight guys, drop out, 
rush six. Right. That's it. You haven't seen how many corner blitzes have you seen out of Utah this year? How many times have we seen a twist inside? How many times have we seen Logan Fano reroute and come through the, the A or the B? We haven't seen a lot of disguise out of this Utah defense. And I'm telling you right now, you're going to see it this weekend. You are going to see Alan Bowman is going to see fronts that he thinks he's seen on tape that are not what he's seen on tape. And that is that is my question. That Arkansas performance terrifies me in picking Oklahoma State. It I can't because the Tulsa game, Tulsa is just not talented. Yeah. Th- throw that game it's out. Not a fair measure. Southern state. Utah is not talented. Throw that game out. Yep. The the Arkansas game terrifies me because you know what else happened in that game that nobody wants to talk about? Ollie Gordon looked disinterested. They didn't see nine, 10 guys in the box against Arkansas. Did they see seven, eight guys? Yes, they did. They didn't, they didn't bring the kitchen sink to stop Ollie Gordon. And when did Ollie Gordon really impact that game? Overtime. That's when he impacted that game. That Arkansas tape terrifies me. So that's what I'm saying. I would expect Ollie Gordon. I would expect to get a full dose of Ollie Gordon if I'm Utah's defense. I would expect Ollie Gordon to show up. Like I would, I would expect his best. And and you know, I, I don't know. I, I'm just more confident that Kyle Whittingham's defense will win the matchup versus Oklahoma State's offense winning a matchup against the best defense that they've seen. I, that and that's why I picked the Utes. And and I know everyone's gonna say, "Oh, it's a Utah show." So is this show like I'm not even a Utah fan. I, I I like I'm not. It has nothing to do with that. I'm looking at it and I'm saying, "Hey." Like your quarterback, while yes, he'll hit an open guy, your quarterback isn't enough of an X factor to overcome the pressure he's going to see. He can't run away from anybody. He's not going anywhere, you know? So you're, you're not going to escape the pressure. Um, are you going to be able to run the football? If they can run the football, I think this is going to be a much closer game. I think if you're running the yeah. football effectively with Ali, this could come like right down to it. But I just, I don't, I don't know, man. I don't see it. I, I don't see... 100, 120-yard game on the ground for Ollie Gordon, mainly because you don't have an o- the offensive line to do that to the Utes defense. And, and and so for that reason, that's what I'm saying. I I just, Cam Rising doesn't have to be all world in this game. What Cam Rising needs to be is good enough. He needs to well, do his damn job and stay healthy and not turn the football over. And if he does that, I think they win the game by, you know, you know probably five to eight points, you know, a 34, you know, 34, 35 for Utah, you know, 27, 28 for Oklahoma State. It, that's, that is the kind of game that I think will play out. Yeah. Uh, I, Alan Bowman is an average ass quarterback. And it is going to be very interesting to see if he, because he's going to have to throw for 300 yards for them to win this game. He's got, that's what they're going to force him to do. And I, 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 listen, I, I've, we probably spent too much time in it. I'm not going to change. I think 38, 34 Oak State. And I'm not, uh, I would put a 35% confidence rating on that. I'm not confident in that at all. Now, when I see Utah come out on the field for their offense t- the first time around, I'm going to feel differently about that pick. I, oh, I almost guarantee it. Mm. But I think that it is, it is, it is cost prohibitive. It is. <laughs> You are an endangered species betting against this Utah defense. Yeah. And I understand that they have not won big ranked opponent games on the road consistently, but that's a non-conference stat. This team knows how to go to USC and win. This team knows how to go to Arizona a couple of years ago and win. This team knows how to go on the road and win big games. And I think that, in my opinion, this is going to be one of the games of the year. All right, let's go put it in the comments section. Score predictions uh, for the uh, Oklahoma State-Utah game. Uh, You see the line. And again, a lot of people have asked me over the last two days. I did an interview yesterday um, on Oklahoma City Radio being asked about why I thought the line changed so much. And I can tell you straight away, I haven't got a, 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 a clue on, on this earth as to why that line flips so much. Because Utah all week long has said straight across the board, Cam Rising is going to play. If Cam Rising plays 
and and, and he is capable, they're going to win the game. Uh, he's that much of an X factor. When Cam Rising's right, he's arguably the best quarterback in the entire country. And I don't think we know the answer to that. Yeah. Karene Reed being out is a real concern for me because that cat's a stud. But again, Oak State's got big injuries at linebacker as well. Uh, Calford gifted five Monty Show memberships. Let's go, Calford. Appreciate you. Uh, who's first one in this morning? Uh, let's see. Mountain Mama, Mike Smith. Uh, it's Friday. How the hell do you get fired on your day off? Who got, Bro, what are you, you talking about, man? Mike, did you lose your job? Uh, hit that like button. Yes, please do. What's up? Uh, Real Pete Forte, Daniel Dixon, Lopes Van Gabe. Yes, please hit the like button. Uh, the Buffalo Hunter. Dorian Singer's got to, got to have an impact on this game mm -hmm. because I think Money Parks is a guy that almost nobody knows who he is. Money Parks needs a running mate. And to this point, he has not had that. And I think, for those of you who don't know, uh, and I know I don't know Cody Ford, and I'm just, you know, I, I don't do you either <laughs> want. Oh, Marty over here. Brant Keithy is a wide receiver, not a tight end. Ryan's up at tight end, totally understand that. They run him out of wide receiver sets more often than they don't. And I think if you can have Singer, Parks, and and Brant Keithy, I don't know how this this Oklahoma State defense has not shown you they can cover that. And then you throw the ball to Dijon Stanley in the flat. This Oak State defense has not this year shown you that they can stop that. And I think that is a uh, I think that's a that's a pretty big deal, in my opinion. So I I think that's gonna be that's gonna be a big part of the game. Scott, a gray water watch. Oak State 24, Utah 21. If it if it's under 50, uh, I think Utah wins the game. You if you the only way Oklahoma State wins this game is if it is a shootout and things get get wrecked. Yeah. Chaos ensues. Yeah, I think you gotta have a shootout. Yeah. You, if it's a low scoring game. Uh Damian Fowler, a healthy cam is better than Shador. I would not say that. I think we've never, and I don't know that we will see the best of Shador Sanders because they don't have an offensive line. Yeah, I think the I think Shador Sanders' arm talent is the best in the country, but that offensive line masks that. So, D Rock Irish, hello, uh, twenty eight twenty four Utah. Okay, uh, CD thirty one twenty eight Utah wins old fart bowl presented by Life Alert. Okay, okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Force Ghost Fabio, Oak State 24, Utah 17. I don't, where do you guys get a defensive struggle? Uh, and, and I'm being serious. Somebody explain to me how this projects out because I've tried to find it. That Oak State secondary is not good. Yeah. And the line, you know, the, the other thing with the linebackers when they were healthy didn't cover well, which is something that, and we talked about the, um, we talked about the Big 12 defensive rankings. Um, and you look at these numbers, it's not good for Oak State. Oak State cannot cover the pass. And in today's college football, you've got to have, you've got to have linebackers that can cover. And you look at Oak State, um, they're giving up on defense. They are giving up 54.2% completions. They are averaging 7.6 yards per completion. And they're giving up 305 yards a game against the pass. Against who? And so I'm asking, how do you reconcile this as an under 50 game? In the in the total combined score under fifty. Yeah, I, I think the over under should be much closer to sixty. Uh, I game. think so. Yeah, because the if, if listen if if we're being honest, you look at the you look at the Utes on defense far superior in the past defense, far superior. You look at um, three games, they're giving up an average of forty five and a half percent completions under fifty percent. Do you know how difficult that is? It's why they're the number one completion percentage defense in the conference, Utah. Uh, you look at the fact that they're only giving up 143 yards. 
you want to chalk that up to competition, I'm with you on that. But you're giving up more more than double what Utah's giving up? That's not good. And you haven't played good competition. So I'm a little, I'm a little concerned about that. As as I think if you're an Oak State fan, you should be. Because you are dead last in pass defense. Right. And that should be concerning. The other thing is you're 13th out of 16th in run defense. See, and that's the one that that for me, I'm not trying to be harsh, mm. but that's inexcusable, man, uh, with who you've played. I, I mean, I, I, how are you? You know, I understand, hey, if you're if you're struggling in the past defense, I get it. But run defense, like that's, that's surprising. That's, yeah, it's surprising. It's you know, it's 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 underwhelming. And I think, you know, I, I, I'm just telling you, like, I, I, if you haven't watched the Utah tape, I would encourage you to get on YouTube and go watch it. Go look what they did to to Utah State. Go look at mm. what they did against Baylor. So, OK, hey, Utah State, not good. OK, fine. Baylor is a lower end team in the Big 12 but still a power 4 team. Still a team that that can compete in the Big 12. Um, they're not going to win but they can compete with you. They th- dude, they put that team in the ground. They they manhandled that team. Like that that's what concerns me yeah. is that is that <laughs> you can't stop the run or the pass effectively against a team that just went out and showed us 2 weeks ago that they can manhandle a power 4 team. And how are you giving up 4.4 yards a carry? Yeah, like again, I, and again, you, you don't have it. You can't have it both ways. You can't say Tulsa sucks and then be like, "Oh, well, it does it doesn't matter? It doesn't matter." That the best we're... team you faced ran ran. Jaquindon Jackson ran all over you, and it, the the it, yeah, I, there are numbers. I I try not to get too far into to statistics, but you haven't played good good opponents, and you're giving up 157 yards a game on the ground. So we're supposed to believe. Going into again, what I would deem is the biggest game on your schedule. There's not a bigger game for Oklahoma State on the schedule. No, so you're not. going into your biggest game of the year, and we're supposed to believe that you're just going to turn it on. That you're gonna you're gonna hit a switch with Ollie Gordon. You're gonna hit a switch and run and pass defense. You're gonna hit a switch and pass pro for Alan Bowman. I told I but, my original projection here was 41 28 Utah. Yeah, and 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 I you know. Not criticizing, but I am surprised that you're going with Oklahoma State. I I, I, think I need it's a to risky see pick. Cam Rising. I need to see it. I need to see him perform. That's that, and I'm worried about Karene Reed being out. I'm, but again, this is an Oak State offense that against lesser opponents um, has only run for 112 yards a game, and you're you're giving up 157 yards a now, game. Now that's one where you've only run for for that a game that's one where i'm like all right i could see 3.4 yards a carry i could see them bumping that up to four yards a carry in this game i i I can see that i can see hey you're you it's time to go ollie gordon's gonna wake up like he's you're fighting the wrong fight though well what is this what and run defense specifically offensive rushing ability what do those two stats tell you about your football team you're either good in the trenches or you're not. If you're giving up more rushing yards a game than you are getting, you're not good in the trenches. Utah, Utah rushes for 192 yards a game. Do you think Utah's defense has given up 192 yards a game on the ground? They're not. They're fifth best against the run in the conference at 109 yards. They're good in the trenches. And their offensive line is suspect. And they're much better statistically than Oak State is. And the, again, I think statistics in football paint pictures. You're rushing, you're rushing margins. Are you giving up more than you're getting? You're not good in the trenches. Yeah. That's what, and I would agree. I started I agree. this preview today talking about what about the Oak State defense? They're a three, three, five, and they use those five guys as a shell. And but why? I think it's a great point. Why? If, think about why you would run a three, three, five. Why would you run a three, three, five versus running a traditional four, three in college football? Because you're worried about the pass. You are trying to cover the pass, and you're you're counting on the fact that those six guys up front, your three down linemen, 
and your three running back or your three linebackers can do a good enough job stopping the run. Yeah. And I'm just telling you when Utah has, has their, their, their big guys in the run package, two tight ends, full offensive line, running back in the backfield, obviously like you're going to have a tough time stopping that. And one thing that really, I think you will see a, a good bit of in this game out of, out of Kyle Whittingham, especially on second and intermediate, like second and five, second and six, you're going to see, they're going to show you a run look. They're going to show you, Hey, two tight ends, you know, running back, we're going to run this. And then what are they going to do? They're going to play action the hell out of you. And Brant Keithy is going to be open eight yards down the field. And then he's going to run for five more after contact. And that's the kind of play that I think is really difficult, not just for Oak state, but for anybody to stop 38, 34, I'm going to stick with it until I see Cam rising on that first drive. Because I think those are my two numbers. And I'm I'm a my official pick is 38-34 Oak State. I could see this. My original projection was 41-28 Utah. 35-27 Utah. All right, there you go. There you go. What are the people saying? Um, let's see. Brandon Butler. If Tulsa can blow Oak State off the line, Utah is going to road grade them. Oak State is surprisingly not good in the trenches. I don't disagree with that. I don't. Mike Smith, Oak State 37, Utah 17. Okay. If Cam plays Utah 31, Oak State 20, he will. I have no question he's going to play. It's at what level? He's got a gash on his throwing hand. That's the biggest issue. Um, He was, it it was in the, the Baylor game. He was, it was a dirty ass play where he was going to the sideline and the defensive lineman pushed him while they were already out of bounds. Yeah, they cleaned him up. Cam went into the the Gatorade compound uh, and has a gash on his throwing hand. And he did not play last week against Utah State. I was told directly that he would have played if it was a game of consequence, he would have played. Isaac Wilson... Looked terrible in the early in that game and looked awesome in the in the second quarter forward. Yeah. So Cam didn't need to play. I think you're gonna see Cam. There's no way for Cam to be a hundred percent, right? Obviously, he's not gonna be a hundred percent, but I do think you're like 80, 90 percent. I think he's had, you know, obviously what what is what would this be? His 13th, 14th day, 14th, 14th day, day tomorrow. Tomorrow. So, you know, you're talking about rested no contact last week didn't take any big hits bodies fully rested you yeah. should be fine sal capone uh 31 17 utah caleb elmore 37 24 because my heart needs it um okay <laughs> okay case Sumbry, oak state has played better opponents in utah thus far and looked worse doing it i would agree that i don't know that i can agree with that actually yeah <laughs> I think Arkansas and Baylor are pretty equal. Yeah. Like, and I think Utah, I'm, they were significantly better than Baylor. Utah State's better than Tulsa. Would we no, agree with I that? would agree with that. And I would, by the way, I'd South like to Dakota point State's out, a good football team. I'd like to point out, Bryson Barnes is Utah State's starting quarterback. He knows the Utah the, defense. You mean the pig farmer? The pig farmer. Everyone's all American last year. Yeah, yeah. that guy. 4128 is crazy, Monty. It's not crazy. And and again, I'm not trying to be sensational or tell you, hey, I'm a big deal. I've watched every snap of Utah football multiple times, and I have seen a ton of tape. Go back and watch the Arkansas game, Kay. Yeah. Actually, don't because you won't sleep well. You go back and you look at and all the tape is on YouTube. It's not yes. hard to get. That Arkansas tape is terrifying because you looked like trash in the secondary i like you had multiple because th- there garbage. were multiple plays and it happened against tulsa as well which is even more shocking where you were you on defense had a run, a clear run formation out of arkansas clear run formation you had an offset tight end motion motion to the middle and then motion back to the right they hand the ball to J- jaquindon and you have DBs running down the field 
And the tight end motion back, sealed the edge, and Jaquindon Jackson is 15 yards up the field before you even knew he was running the ball. Now, now admittedly, admittedly, in all fairness, I, I agree with all that. Jaquindon Jackson is explosive as hell. Like yes, he, he, is. he is fast. He is explosive. His first step is better than yours. He can outrun almost anybody. And Makai Bernard is not that guy. Makai Bernard is, hey, I lift weights. I'm going to run you the hell over guy. And so maybe that maybe that helps Oak State's defense. But but I would agree when it's a clear running formation and your DBs are not doing what they should be doing, that's that's cause for concern. And the other thing that's been pervasive over three games, a, a lack of of communication in the secondary. Like it, you can see, there were several plays, um, especially in, against Arkansas and especially against Tulsa on the the Tulsa touchdown, I believe it was. The, you, you just had miscommunication there, where you just you thought in it twice against Arkansas, you thought there was a guy over the top in the second half. And Oak State's defense in the second half against Arkansas was measurably better. It was you still had miscommunication in the secondary. And you're just not a good, you're not a good cover defense in any way, shape, or form. CD, Cam smoked the uh, athletic trainer too when he got shoved. Poor girl, never saw it coming. It was an ugly play. Yeah. Uh, Thomas Reed, 33-17, uh, Utah. Okay. Cam juicing up on the insure and popping the Centrum Silvers. <laughs> just an old okay. band reference. <laughs> you know. He's he's on that he's on that depends Mike, a lot. Mike, you're having a day so far, dude. I appreciate you. You know. Scott of Greywater Watch. Nebraska tonight. USC takes out Big Blue and Tennessee gets a win in Norman. We'll get to that Tennessee. Well, but Tennessee's not a blue blood. Yeah, I mean, what what the hell are you talking about, dude? Uh the Dakota teams could be competitive in a lot of non-power five conferences. But should they be competitive against a team like Oak State that is selling us on being a conference champion? No. They shouldn't be. But they were. And I think that matters. Uh, yeah, that Arkansas game was really bad, I will admit. And it, it... And again, notice, notice. I want to point something out, because I, I respect you, Kay. I, I understand you're an Oak State guy. I get it. But notice what we're not saying here. We're not saying Oklahoma State sucks, or they're just terrible, or they're no. embarrassed. We're, we're not saying that. What, what we're saying is, if you watch the film, the film will tell you there are issues that have been, have been taking place in that in that secondary that and, haven't gotten fixed. Yeah, and, and so whether whether your name is Jaquindon Jackson or Money Parks, does it really matter if you have acres of room in your secondary because you know the the over the top coverage the cornerback thought was there is actually not there and is on the other side of the field trying to corral Brant Keithy? Like that's the problem. That's that's what I'm personally concerned about. I don't think that Utah is miles better. Than Oklahoma State. What what my confidence in my pick stems from the fact that I don't worry about Utah having miscommunications on defense. I don't worry about you know Lander Barton you know running to the wrong side of the field pre snap. Like I don't worry about those things happening. Yeah. And so if your defense and, and this is just a generality for football, any of the football you watch this weekend, when a defense is disciplined enough to just be where they're supposed to be within the scheme, just be on your spot of the field, you're not going to put up 400 yards of passing offense. Man. And and I think the other thing that if you're an Oklahoma State fan, watch for this one thing because I think it will determine who wins the first half and likely the game. How effective are, are Utah tight ends at sealing the edge in the short passing game? Because when you look at one of the staples of this Utah offense – is the swing pass to the flat to Bernard or Stanley. And one of the keys that Utah uses there is Brant Keithy and, and, and whoever's at that tight end sealing that side. And furthermore, how good is the edge from Utah in the run game? Because I think if if Bernard's able to get to the linebackers, you guys are, the Oak State is cooked. Oak State is cooked. Uh, Sam Lock, good morning, casuals. Hello. I wonder, I wonder too, to that point, if we see a departure from the 3 3 5 at certain points in this game, do we see Oklahoma State? Maybe, maybe you keep, you know, the DB shell, right? But maybe you're in on certain situations down in distance, right? Obviously, but maybe you see them yeah. bring down some of those DBs into the box to help with run defense. I mean, I, I can't believe that that Mike Gundy is going to stand there on the sideline 
and watch Utah early in this game do what they do, running the football, and he's well, not going to bring more. Kendall Daniels is is the guy that I think you have to have a big game from. I mean, he's he's a guy that's athletic. He's fast. He's got um, – obviously, he used to be a safety, so he's a, a downhill player. He's excellent um, at the line of scrimmage and two yards deep into the backfield. Uh, Kendall, Kendall Daniels is absolutely a disruptor for for them. So – I think he's a he's a guy that I'd be watching, but again, I think that's the that's the prototypical guy against a a really scheme sound and and aggressive group of tight ends that know how to seal an edge and know how to pin down a and what Utah does really well with their tight ends when they seal that edge, they take your defensive end, your linebacker, and they pin him against your defensive tackle. And so there is a yard and a half, two yards there for the running back to go by. And if that's allowed to go on, if that happens consistently, you're going to see that that 3-3-5, three, three, like a 5-3 in, in, on first and seconds, you're going to have at least. Yeah. And that's where you get in trouble with, with the Utes because Cam Rising is actually a pretty damn effective play action passer as well. So you guys see what I mean? If if Utah is allowed to run the football like that and the defense has to come closer to the line, you're you are asking for a money parks bomb in the first half. Uh Brandon Butler, if Bernard is getting to the second level, who in the secondary is going to tackle him? That's a great point. Because yeah. too often Oak State's running away with their back to the line of scrimmage. Uh UW fan Jim, am I in the doghouse? Well, I mean, you are a Washington fan. Like, is that what you're referencing? See yeah, what he see, did he's there. in the he dog, house. The dog it's, house. It's, it's the dog. See what he did. You know, uh, Gumby says no. Okay. I think I, he was joking. I think he was joking. Yeah. Uh, I think Oak State was a bit overhyped. Uh, I don't know about that. I think Oak State's I, solid. Yeah. I, I think Oak State, you know, Oak State uniquely is one of those teams where it really depends where you live in, in, in how you view them. Like, I think if you're, in the Midwest, you're favoring Oklahoma State in this game. You see them more. You you don't you don't see, see Utah you at don't all. See Utah at all. Like I I, I think yeah. And, and this is why we both said multiple times today: get your ass on YouTube after the show and watch the tape. Like go and watch the film. It's not hard to to find it and watch it play by play. Take your time. Look at the pre snap versus where the ball goes versus where your defense should be going. Gumby says uh, LSU better drop 70 this weekend. What is our, what is our level of confidence in Brian Kelly at LSU? Cause mine's not high. I'm going to be honest with you. I, as a, as a scarred Notre Dame fan, uh, my confidence Was it in the Alabama game. <laughs> Well, he's got UCLA and Death Valley this weekend. Notre Dame, our mother. There's nothing to believe that his 22 and a half point number should be in jeopardy. Uh, I agree. Uh, remember, I told you the secondary word me. You did. Yeah. Uh, Brandon Butler, my only concern is if Utah gets too conservative. Kyle can keep opponents in the game by not going for the throat. That's absolutely been a trade great observation. Mark. Yes. To panic, I would run a 5 2 against Utah. You'll get torched. You have to be flexible. You have to be an amoeba defense. <laughs> be pliable. Be flexible. But I think when you're when you're down two linebackers and you don't have a talented secondary, it's difficult to do that. It's difficult to ask guys to make plays that they're not comfortable making. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move on to some other games. I'm working on it. We have a lot of comments yes, today. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Tom Dean gifts uh, five Monty Show memberships. Appreciate you, Tom. Thank you. Calford gifts 10 more okay. Monty Show memberships. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, my Notre Dame trauma says Kelly will wreck LSU eventually. He I mean, will. they're not in danger of losing this game. He will. 